Good morning, Audacious Church. My name is Catherine Wollstonecroft and it's my absolute privilege to be able to share with you from uh, Proverbs 17 this morning. I'm married to Julian and both of us attend Audacious North under the amazing leadership of Pastor Joel and Becky Weaver. So this proverb is absolutely packed with loads of great stuff. Uh, I'm not going to be able to share all of it with you today, but I would really recommend that you have a little read through this at some point today. So straight away, we'll jump in and we'll go to verse one, which says, better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. When I first read this, uh, I began to immediately think of ways that I could make that dry morsel better. Perhaps I could add some balsamic vinegar with oil or dip it in some hummus and began to realise that I was actually missing the point. As a family, we have three boys. They're now grown up, but oh, I can honestly tell you that when they were growing up, our house was hardly peaceful. We often would be really noisy, fights and squabbles. And sometimes I would find myself driving home from work, picturing a different house and thinking, which house could I drive into tonight and, and, and have my tea at where I'm gonna find some peace? However, I learned that it was down to me and it was down to Julian to change the atmosphere in, in the house. Sometimes if I would come home from work irritated or annoyed by the stress of the day, then I would be bringing my own strife and my own um, situation into this house. So I quickly learned that it was down to me to change the tone of the house. What could you do today that would change the tone of your house or where you work or who you bring you who you meet in your day to day life? The next verse I want to share with you is from verse three. Now, this verse says the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Now, I'm going to show my age now because when I read this, it took me back to my O level chemistry days and I remember learning about the refining process uh, and how the temperature needs to be at the right temperature to get away all the dross from that metal and to make it pure and it sounds such a vigorous process but when I read this I was just so grateful and so reminded of how our God wants to test our hearts. He wants to purify us. He doesn't want us to have to go through the fire, but he wants to do it in a loving and gentle way. And I'm so glad that I can trust my saviour with my heart and uh, let him get the toxic stuff out of my life so that I can live as he would want me to live. What do you need to think about this this day really what do you need God to work on in you because there's no better place or no better person to take that issue to so that was verse three the next verse that I'd like to share with you is verse four and in the message it says evil people relish malice, malicious conversation the ears of liars itch for dirty gossip wow what a verse. Well, this has helped me also because recently at work, I found myself in quite a challenging situation where some of the conversations haven't been as good as what I would hope they would be. So I've had to try and make a stand and divert conversations and actually choose to not, not listen to some conversations that I've been, uh, have previously been involved with. We have a responsibility not only for the words that we say, but for the words that we listen to. In lockdown three, Julian and I have had the guilty pleasure of watching Selling Sunset. Uh, now this is um, a programme that's set in LA and it's about real estate agents and they actually sell houses up to the value of 70 million. And we obviously are watching it for the sunset and the beautiful beaches and uh, the houses but oh my goodness some of those conversations are actually so toxic and not nice at all to be part of so have a think today just remember 
whoever gossips to you is probably gossiping about you. So let's really, really think hard about the, the conversations that we need to be involved in and actually think about what conversations do I actually need to exit from. Uh, the next verse I'm going to share, it's all at the beginning of the proverb really, is verse 5 and it says, He who mocks the poor reproaches his maker. Wow. I really do not want to reproach God. I really do not want to disappoint my, my saviour. And we are called to love the poor and we are called not to mock and to make a difference. And this is a real key verse um, for, for me as, as Julian works with the um, homeless. And as a church, I'm so glad that Audacious is actively pursuing, helping and supporting those who are less fortunate than ourselves. I'm going to share now um, the importance of loving our family. In verse 6, it says, children's children are a crown to the aged and the parents of the pride, are, parents are the pride of their children. This is a great verse and it shows just how generational our God is, how he has a plan for families, how he wants us to love and support each other and to champion each other. And I know it's been hard in lockdown. We can't see our families or be around our families as much as we would want to be. But what could you do even with these lockdown restrictions to let your family know this day just how special they are to you. And verse nine says, overlook an offence and bond a friendship. Fasten on to it a slight and goodbye friend. Our friendships are so important to us and our friendships are so important to God. Let's choose today to be people that let go easily of things that could offend us. I remember listening to a preach many years ago speaking about offence being the devil's bait i really don't want to be trapped with the devil's bait i want to live freely i want to have great friendships and god that is god's best plan for all of us who do you need to forgive today what offence do you need to let go of because holding on to it is just not going to do you any good and finally a verse from the end of the chapter and it's a really common verse and I want to end with this a cheerful dis disposition is good for your health gloom and doom leave you bone tired now that's verse 22 and dare I mention it the covid word we are all covid tired we are all covid weary and lockdowns are so hard but we are called to be cheerful. We're called to bring good medicine to people that we meet. We're called to make a difference. So today, no matter what you're facing, no matter what situation you're going through, let's make that difference. Let us be audacious. Let us choose to be the people that God would want us to be. Can I just pray for you? God, I just thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we have so much to learn just from these few verses, Lord God. And Lord God, I just thank you that you love us passionately, Lord. Lord, I just pray as we step into our day, Lord, I just pray that you would go with us, Lord, that you would guard our hearts, Lord God, that you would show us areas of our life that you would love to work on and support us through, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I just pray for the conversations that we have Keep our mouths clean. Keep our ears from listening to things that we shouldn't be hearing, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, I just pray that we will make a difference as we walk into this day. Amen. Well, thank you, church, for listening to me. I just hope I see you soon. Don't forget, book in online, get your ticket. It's great. And I'll see you soon.